Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's June the 21st and we're looking at Job chapter 31. Now in this passage we have um, Job speaking. He says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? You see, Job is saying, I've made a promise, a promise to my eyes that I would not look upon a young girl. For what portion of God is there from above and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? You see, <laughs> Job didn't have one of those things attached to his belt that counted his steps through the day. It's not like that. He says, God sees all that I do. He counts every step I take through the day. God has a record of everything that I do. Now, if I have walked with vanity, <clears throat> or if my foot has hasted to deceit, then let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know my integrity. You see, he's saying to God, you weigh everything. I want to be weighed fairly. I want, to, I want you to know whether I really have sinned in any way whatsoever. Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know my integrity. Now, integrity is the concept whereby um, a person is consistent throughout all of his life. He says, I have con integrity. I'm not just righteous in one department of my life. I am righteous right across all the various departments of my life. Now he brings a lot of if statements beginning in verse 7. He says, if my step has turned out of the way and my heart walked after mine eyes and if any blot has cleaved to my hands then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If my heart has been deceived by a woman or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let another then let my wife be taken by another man and let others have her. For this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. You see, God has raised up amongst men, even in the days of Job, judges, men whom God sets up and puts over men to bring judgment upon the wicked for it is a fire that consumeth to destruction and would root out all my increase another if verse 13 if i despise the cause of my manservant or my maidservant when they contend with me what shall i do when god rises up against me and when he visits me, what shall I answer him? Did not he make me in the womb? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? He says, I have servants. Um, and when they come to me because they have a complaint against me, um, I've got to remember that it is God who made me and God who made them and that God holds me accountable for how I live and how I deal with my servants. Verse 16, if I have withheld the poor from their desire and have caused the eyes of the widows to fail or have eaten my morsel alone and the fatherless have not eaten thereof. He says, if I do not share if I do not give food or clothing to the poor, if I keep all of my money and all of my food to myself, then let my arm fall from my shoulder blade and my arm be broken from the bone. For destruction from God will be a terror to me and by reason of his highest highness, I could not endure. 
You see, what Job is saying is this. If I've done these things, if this is the reason why I'm in the state I'm in, then let God judge me. I'm not afraid of that. Well, I am afraid of that, he says. But he says that's what should happen because that's righteous judgment, even upon a righteous man as it is upon a wicked man. <clears throat> now then, verse 24. If I have made gold my hope, or have said to find gold, thou art my confidence. And if I have rejoiced because my wealth was great, and because my hand had gotten much, if I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart hath been secretly enticed, or my mouth has kissed my hand, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I should have denied the God that is above. You know, we all need to be very wary of this. Job says, don't make your hope in gold. Don't make your hope in gold. Don't speak to gold saying, I have got confidence in you. Because if that's what happens, then that is an iniquity to be judged by men. <clears throat> and I will have denied God who is above. Verse 29. If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him that hates me, or lifted up myself when evil found me, Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. When somebody hates you, don't wish them evil. Don't wish them evil. Because that brings a curse on your own soul. If the men of my tabernacle said not, Oh, that we had his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors. To the traveller. He says, the stranger, the person who comes into the land, who has no place of his own, I don't make him, I don't make him sleep in the street outside my door. No, no, my home must be open to the traveller. If I covered my transgressions as Adam did by hiding my iniquity in my bosom, did I fear a great multitude, or did the contempt of families terrify me, so that I kept silence, and went not out of the door? Oh, that one would hear me! Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that my adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder, I would bind it as a crown to me, I would declare unto him the number of my steps, as a prince would I go near unto him, if my land cry against me, or that the furrows likewise complain against me, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, or caused the owners thereof to lose their life, let thistles grow instead of wheat, and cockle instead of barley. Cockle there, by the way, is an old-fashioned English word, and it's, <clears throat> it's only ever mentioned once in the Bible. It's referring to weeds that stink, sometimes called stinkweed. It's um, a curse to farmers. It comes up in barley fields. What he's saying is this. Job is saying, look, if I have sinned, and he lists all the different ways in which he could sin, some ways that might surprise us. He said, then let the judges judge me. Let God judge me. Let God bring righteous judgment upon me. I do not withdraw. I do not seek to be um, uh, not judged by God. You see, this is what life was like in the old covenant i'm not talking about the old covenant of moses in the old covenant of noah this old covenant exists today all those that are outside of grace and outside of um, the promises to uh, abraham everybody in the world that is a gentile that is unsaved is in the same covenant as noah <clears throat> and God will deal with them. God has a relationship with them and he will deal with them according to the way they live. If they're righteous, then he will bless them. If they're wicked, then he will deal with them appropriately. The thing about the book of Job is this. 
is that even the righteous in that sense can sometimes know the disciplines of God. And that's what the book of Job is all about. Now, <clears throat> in chapter 33, 32, sorry, Elihu interrupts Job. Now let's read the story. Let's see how it goes. So these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Now, the phrase righteous in his own eyes, it doesn't mean that he was proud. It doesn't mean that he was conceited. It just means that he in all honesty before the Lord his God knew that he hadn't sinned. He knew that he was in a state of peace with God. He was in a state of shalom. He knew that any sin he had committed had been covered by blood sacrifice. He knew that his righteousness, he knew that his integrity had held out. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barachel the Bazite, of the kindred of Ram, against Job, was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Now Elihu is going to betray the um, the immaturity of his thinking. He's also going to betray that he actually doesn't understand the problem. But we'll see what the man says. <clears throat> he says, he says, against the three friends was his wrath kindled because they found no answer. And yet they had condemned Job. You see, Job's three friends had come and they could not answer Job. Job had said to them, I have I am righteous. I have kept my integrity before God. And their argument did not hold weight in, in, in the face of Job. <clears throat> now, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. Um, and Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men. Then his wrath was kindled, kindled and Elihu answered and said, I am young and you are old. Wherefore I was afraid and does not show my opinion. Uh, he says, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So there's two things. First of all, he says, I have a spirit. And in that spirit, I can understand things. Uh, but on top of that, I have the inspiration of the Almighty. <clears throat> this was an inspired man. This was a man of God. This was a man who was a prophet of the Lord. Elihu was a prophet of the Lord. He says, the inspiration of the Almighty giveth me or giveth them understanding. Now, verse 9 is my password for today. It's been not very often I have the password of one of the opponents of Job as my password. But here it is, verse 9. He says, great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment now that's a very important point we must not ever you see run away with the idea that because a person's old that therefore what they say makes sense <clears throat> because great men are great men but they're not always wise we only have to look at someone like solomon now solomon was the wisest man who ever lived and yet in spite of how wise he was he wasn't always wise. And towards the end of his life, he did many foolish, foolish things. You see, even wise men are not always wise. Nor do the ages, aged understand judgment. You see, the fact that someone's old doesn't mean that they always understand correctly. They don't always make the right judgment. Therefore, I said, listen to me and I will give you my opinion. <laughs> oh, this young man's brave, isn't he? <clears throat> he says, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons while you searched out a way, searched out what to say. I listened to you. There was, there was none of you that convinced Job. 
<laughs> or that answered him with words. Nobody was able to convince Job that he was a sinner when he was righteous. Um, <laughs> so he says, he says, I will answer for my part. I will show my opinion, for I am full of matter. The spirit within me constrains me. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's his own spirit. I will show you my opinion, for I am full of matter. And the spirit within me constrains me. He says, my belly is like wine with no vent. He says, it's ready to burst like new bottles. <laughs> I will speak that I may be refreshed. I want to get this all off my chest, he's saying. I want to open my lips and answer. So let me speak, I pray, and accept any man's person. Uh, neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattering titles. And in doing so, my maker would take me away. Notice that, verse, 30, verse 22. It's an interesting point there. He says, I know not to give flattering titles, for in doing so, my maker would take me away. Oh, now that's important, isn't it? You see, we're learning something here. Even this man, this young man, who it will be proved that knows nothing in the end, he knew one thing. He knew that giving flattering titles to men is something that his maker would cause him to come into judgment about. Now, that's interesting. You know, we must, we must not get bowled over by men of titles. Yes, we might have due respect to a person like a judge. He's been raised up by God. You may not realise that, but it's been raised up by God to bring judgment in this world. We might have respect unto a policeman. We might even have respect unto a politician. Because they have been raised up by God to govern the world in which we live. However, we're not to give flattering titles. Because God will bring judgment upon us if we seek to, to be flattering. So, so chapter 33, he says, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches, listen to my words. He's pleading to be heard. He's got to get this off his chest. He's ready to burst with what he has to say. What's he going to say then? He says, my words will be of the uprightness of my heart and my, my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. He is an honest man. He is an honest man. He says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, set my words in order before me. Stand up, behold, I am, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I am formed out of clay. He says, Look, I'm just a man. I've been made by God out of clay. I'm going to speak and if I say something wrong, then correct me. Now, here's an honest man. <clears throat> Surely, he says, verse 8, Thou hast spoken in my hearing, and I heard the voice of, the, of your words, saying, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. He says, I heard what you said, Job. This is what you said. Behold, he findeth occasions against me, he counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks. He marketh all my path. Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Got that? So he's saying, he, he quotes Job. He says, you have said, I am clean and without transgression. I am innocent and there is no iniquity in, in me. However, God has found an occasion against me and he has counted me for his enemy. This is the situation. This is how Job understands it. And this is a correct perception of how things are. He's, and Job says, and, and the young man quotes him, he says, he hath put my feet in the stocks and he marketh my paths. Now, says Elihu, this is what I'm going to tell you. He says, you're not just, <clears throat> and I will answer thee, that God is greater than man. 
Why dost thou strive against him? For he hath given not account of any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon man, in slumberings upon his bed, when he openeth the ears of man, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chased also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain so that his life aboreth bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen. His bones that were not that that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near to the grave, his life to the destroyers. He's describing, Elihu is describing the life of a man. He says, and God is against you and he is disciplining you. He's taken away your appetite from you. And that's because you're not just in his sight. You're not just. Okay, um, he says, <clears throat> his flesh, um, he says, verse 24, Then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's, he will return to the days of his youth, he will pray unto God, and he will be favourable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, and he will render unto man his righteousness. And just stop a moment. This is exactly the theology of Old Testament covenants. This is exactly what it is. This is exactly, if I might say, what the faith healers of today preach. They say, if you pray to God, God will restore you without any shadow of a doubt. He'll make your flesh return to that of a child. He will give you the days of your youth again. If you pray to him, he will render you according to your righteousness. Okay? The problem is, that the life of Job is a testimony to disprove that. Doesn't it isn't true. Verse 27, he looketh upon man, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which is right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going down to the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things God worketh oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job, my word, he's a brave young man. Listen to me, hold your peace. It's my turn to speak. If you have anything to say, then answer me, speak. For I desire to justify thee. If not, listen unto me and hold your peace. I shall teach thee wisdom. <laughs> he is a righteous young man, full of himself. And he says to the old man, I want to teach you how to be wise. Now that's a very brave young man. What is he saying? He's giving standard Old Testament theology. He's saying that if you're righteous, God will bless you. If you're unrighteous, God will punish you. Everybody knew that. Everybody knows that. Everybody understands that. The difficulty is this, is that in this case, it doesn't work. Here we have a righteous man in the, in, 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 the, in, in the name of Job. He is righteous before God. He has kept his integrity and yet he still suffers under the hand of God. And that is the conundrum. That is the problem. That is the issue. Well, God bless you. Great to speak to you. Look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow. Bye for now.